Hans. Hi, oh, Mayor. I'm going to pull in the next lay boy. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Do you uh, want to get in the back? No, I want to stop in front with you. <laughs> yes, it's Russ Abbott's Madhouse, starring Russ Abbott. Also starring Les Dennis and Dustin G. With Jeffrey Holland, Sherry Hewson. Susie Blake and Bella Remberg. Share costume last night for a fancy dress party. Oh, yes, the kangaroo. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, it was great. Have a good night. Oh. Hello, darling. Don't you darling me, Vince Prince. What's wrong? That's the monkey costume I hired. Monkey? I told you to hire a rabbit. I know, I changed it. I thought I'd surprise you. Well, that's stupid. I was dancing with the rabbit all night. You <laughs> really were not just dancing with you, were kissing and cuddling her all night. Well, how was I to know? Hello, I hired this rabbit costume. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. I'd like to welcome you aboard flight number 507 to Los Angeles. For your convenience, shortly after takeoff, the in-flight movie Gone with the Wind will be showing in the cinema on the lower deck. The sauna bath and Turkish baths are now open in the swimming complex on the upper deck. <laughs> on the mid-deck, the Wimbledon tennis trials between John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors will take place on the center court. <laughs> Starting shortly on the athletic track, we have the Olympics men's 1500 meters. On the golf course, the main deck, the British Open Golf Championship is in its final round with the leader, Jack Nicholas, one in front. <laughs> the much-awaited horse of the year show will take place in the main arena on the second upper deck. Passengers should note that they should enter the arena by the left gate and competitors with their horses by the right gate. <laughs> now I'll be talking to you a little lady drawing the flight. All that remains for me to do now is get this bloody thing off the ground. <laughs> I thought he ran awfully well. Yeah. Yeah. Seemed a bit nervous at the start, but soon settled down. Johnny could race there, what? Oh. <laughs> so what do we fancy in the third? Well, actually, old man, I've had a bit of a nod from the Duke himself. Yes, he's given me the tip on November Prince. Should yeah. run in about ten to one. Yeah, <laughs> Take the notice, dear. Take the notice. I'm not wearing tails, no. Leave that to the horses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, the Royal Box at Ascot. Hey, we're going to have a lovely day at the races. If you can't see too well, just give me a nudge. You can sit on my shoulders. Yes. <laughs> Then. Yes, I do have connections, dear. The Prince of Wales. <gasps> really? Yes, the landlord there gave me a couple of tickets. <laughs> <laughs> no fighting, boys. No fighting. No. <laughs> Just shake hands and make up, all right? Are they making signs about the horses? They're trying to put the horses off their game, dear. Yes. Horse racing can be very corrupt. It's a good job I came along. Now, shall we survey the competitors? <laughs> <clears throat> no, no, Ooh. dear. They all seem miles away. Yeah, that's, that's an optician's illusion. Yes, there you go. <laughs> That's it, my sweet. Oh, <laughs> look over there, number nine. No, that's number six, dear. He's fallen. Yes. <laughs> the jockey's flogging a dead horse. <laughs> well, I'm not going to back him. He's got bandages all over his legs. Oh, that's quite normal. That's to sort of protect his shins. Fetlocks. Excuse me. Don't use that language in front of the car. <laughs> Any more of that, and you'll be eating your smoked salmon through a drip. <laughs> Then. Now, my little black beauty, shall we have a little flutter on the GGs? Oh, you know all the racing terms. I think you're something of an expert, aren't you? Yes, well, I am that bent. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Can I put a bet on Gizmo? I'm not running. <laughs> <laughs> See what you mean? Allow me, my dear. Yes. Uh, referee, uh, two pounds each way on William Hill. <laughs> That's the name of the bookmaker, sir. What's he saying? Uh, he's refusing my bet, dear. He obviously knows he's going to lose a fortune. Yes, yes. How come you know so much about the races, then? Well, I take it off my father, you know, yes. Yes, uh, he was sort of uh, well in with the sort of equine community. Oh. Was he a breeder? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> was he a jockey? No, 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 but he, uh, he had a coal round in Toxteth. Yes. <laughs> he knew a lot about horses. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, take number four, for example. He could tell at a glance that that is a two-year-old filly. Mm. It's a gelding. What's a gelding? <laughs> 
it's difficult to explain, you see, my sweet. It's uh, they sort of cut, um... Well, they, they take things away. They don't give them so much food? Well, they don't get the oats the others do, that's for sure. <laughs> you can always spot them the way they walk around the pits. Paddock. You what? It's not the pits, it's the paddock, and that's a gelding. Any more from you, mate, and you'll be able to explain what a gelding is from personal experience. <laughs> Well, as I said, the Duke said to put everything on uh, November Prince. I thought you said it was going at ten to one. Yes. What's she talking about? It's half past three now. <laughs> no, no, those are the betting odds, my dear, but they're wasting their time with November Prince. Last time he run the jockey wore pyjamas. Mm. He was overtaken by a milk float on a last fairlong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a one-horse race. Mm. What does he mean? There's only one horse running. <laughs> put all your money on that one, Gizmo. Too risky, dear. Why? Well, he might fall at the first jump. Yes. That'll be difficult. They're racing over the flat. I'll flatten you in a minute. <laughs> on the flat gizmo? Uh, maybe after the race, dear, yes. <laughs> I got a couple of nice tips. So I see. <laughs> Leicester, that's a funny name. Why is it called that, then? He's got stables in Leicester. Oh. <laughs> what about Pat Eddery? Well, he should have patched the yours before the race. Oh. Yeah. What about little Willie Carson? I'll explain that later. <laughs> <laughs> someone say that Lester Piggott's gonna walk it. Don't be silly, my dear. He's not allowed to get off to yours. <laughs> I wish you had a horse, Gizmo. I have. Knickers. Would you believe he's running in the next race? Knickers. And they're off. And it's a bad <laughs> Would you believe you're sitting number five over there? Yeah. You're standing next to the proud owner. Oh, good luck. Not him, me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See that over? That's him. That's him. And he won't stop running until he catches that rabbit. <laughs> Yes. Is he well bred? Well bred? If he could talk, he wouldn't speak to either of us. Tell you. <laughs> Blimey, look at the size of that. The old neck needs blinkers. Do you mind? That's a woman and I married her. Well, you need blinkers. <laughs> That's it, he's gonna win. He's gonna win this, he's winning. He's not stopping, he's, he's still running, he's not stopping. I think that's probably my fault. What do you mean? I saw him over there by the fence. I went over and tickled his bum. Well, you better tickle mine. I've got to catch him now. <laughs> On second thoughts, what about that flat meeting? <laughs> right, my dear, give me a confession. Father, I, I was caught shoplifting in the local supermarket. They nabbed me as soon as I walked out through the front door. Oh, dearie, dearie, dearie to me. Listen, what you got to do is use the back door, cos it's easy, you see. <laughs> You can back your man right up to the door for a quick getaway. Now, go on, remember that next time. Yes, sir. Right, next. <laughs> Confess, my child. I went to the cinema last night, Father. I feel so ashamed. What you got to be ashamed about? Well, there were naughty films. Did you enjoy them? Well, I never actually got to see them. The manager wouldn't let me in. Oh, shit. Listen, go back there and mention my name. I'll get a good seat. All right? <laughs> you enjoy yourself. Go. Next. Father, this my... morning I knocked over a traffic warden at a zebra crossing. Oh, that's a beauty. Oh. <laughs> Was it hurt? I don't think so. He got up and walked away. Ah, uh, can't bless us. Never mind, you can always try again tomorrow. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Confess, my child. Father, I've been going out with a farmer's wife. Oh, good God, haven't we all? You don't think I buy me eggs, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel guilty because she's a married lady. But aren't they the best? They don't yell, they don't tell, they're always grateful. <laughs> you should try the news agent's wife. That's a good tip for you. Go on, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Michael! Michael, what are you doing in my robes? You're still trying to play a priest and you're a simple altar boy. Ah, that's right, Father, but I've certainly altered the style of confession. <laughs> And I'm feeling very grand And I have had a drink in every boozer in the land My favourite is a little pub It's called the Jolly Jack I started out on pints of beer And ended on my back All right, Van Leder I've been bronze list, booed and hissed, bottle blutter blind. I've been cut and crushed, stoned and smashed, pickled, plastered fine. I've been hit and missed, Oliver Twist, tanked up, squiffy, slewed. I've been pie eyed, piddled, pickled, I've been absolutely stewed. <laughs> 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 
fairly all of it, boys. I've been pixelated, debriated, loaded, stinking ball. I've been jumped and juiced and shot, and I've been slaughtered, stewed and oiled. I've been pushed and brained and bilious, completely mesmerized. I've been saturated, sozzled, had a skinful, glassy eye. <laughs> Okay, let's go for the big one. I've been elephant strung, like a skunk, legless rolling tight, sodden, soaked and sauced, and I've been sick all through the night. <laughs> but I couldn't change the might of it, no matter what you think. Now please excuse the pair of me, I'm going for a drink. <laughs> Red Trophy Fencing Finals. Bob Alsop and Pete Batley are this year's duel in duo. On guard. And they're up. Pete strikes first. But Bob's putting up stiff defence. Pete's at it hammer and nails now. No, oh, Bob's run them through. And Pete's running to River. He's in off his head. Everybody's come up with guns. And poor Bob's lost. Amazed. Home straight. And Pete's finished with fine style. Dueling done, Pete shows he's as good at tailing as he is at failing. He's only happy holding trophy. Whitbread trophy bitter. Head and body above the rest. Finished? Yeah, yes, Cabinet. I've uh, painted the porch. Good. Hope you did it properly. Stripped it down before painting it. Oh, yeah, Cabinet. It works, didn't I? I sort of stripped it down, scraped it, then I used a blow lamp. Good show. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, then. Uh, do you want me to do the Mercedes? <laughs> now then, Mr. Snares, I've been going through my files and I don't appear to have received any tax return forms from either you or your business associate for quite some time. Uh, no, I've been ill. For over 25 years. <laughs> I've been very ill, haven't I, Ringo? Yes, I was sick. However, I do have items of information that lead me to believe that you have, in fact, been engaged in various money-making activities. Who's crossed? <laughs> to wit. To whom? <laughs> To wit. Who's a twit? <laughs> to wit. What? <laughs> to wit, 1972, when an establishment known as Sid's Quality Motors appears to have been trading in Peckham. Yeah, well, that was it. It was a hobby, John, you see. I mean, the prices I was charged and didn't even cover the costs. I mean, it was a steal. Yeah, in fact, most of them were stolen, wasn't they, Uncle Sid? Yeah. <laughs> so what about the books? Ah, oh, well, all legit they were, you know, chassis numbers, previous owners, little old ladies, that sort of thing. I mean, but what is done is done, John. Mm. You can't look in the past, you can't turn the clocks back. You can, Uncle Sid. Remember you showed me how to get under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about the vehicle logbooks. I'm asking about the accounts records. Surely there must have been receipts, ledgers, bank statements. Sadly, no, no, no. Some accidentally spilled petrol. Yeah. A carelessly tossed away cigarette. Yeah. All gone. Woof. Hm. A fire? What run was this? 1974. No, no, 1975, Uncle said. I didn't start smoking till then. 1975. <laughs> well, in 1976, you appear to have opened a shop known as Sid's Gear. Is that correct? Yeah, well, you see, I was minding it for a friend of mine. He'd gone away for six months. Well, what was he doing? Six months. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk about the tax accounts for your shop. Do you have the books with you? Ah, no, let me guess. Another fire? Sadly, no. Unexploded bomb in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler's revenge, I'll call it, yeah. Trying to undermine a small businessman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it surprised me. Yeah, especially when it went off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't appear to have had very much luck, Mr. Snears. I'm a, I'm a victim of fate, John. Yeah. Yes, well, perhaps you wouldn't mind talking about your latest venture, Sid's videos. I have here a list of your stock. It's all good, clean stuff, that. Naughty nights with Norwegian nurses. <laughs> Hospital drama. <laughs> Tie me up and whip me. Uh, biblical epic, yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But I gather the police have already been round on a number of occasions and removed some dubious items. Oh, yeah, that's true, but they always bring them back after the party. Yeah. <laughs> so, all in all, it seems to be quite a little money spinner for you. Have you brought the books with you? Well, I bother with the books with it. We see the film holes, eh? So, eh? <laughs> so you haven't kept any records? No, just videos. <laughs> Shall we stop wasting each other's time, Mr. Sneers? I've already prepared an estimated assessment of your income tax liability. Shall we say £3,000? Shall we say £2,000? No, we'll say £3,000. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain, John. <laughs> it's a dog's life. Well, <laughs> still, <laughs> I know what I'm beating. There you go. £3,000. Ah, thank you, Mr. Sneers. I knew you'd see it my way. Okay. <laughs> see ya. Yeah, Uncle Sid, I never thought you'd give in that easily. Still, suppose it could have been worse. Of course you could, son. I mean, he could have found out about the printing business, couldn't he? Hey? <laughs> Here, Les. What? You know, some of the lads think I'm a bit mad. What, you, Vince? Mad? Yeah. Yeah. Why would they think that? Because I like sausages. Yeah? Of course, yeah. You like sausages? Uh, well, everybody likes sausages. I like sausages. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to come round and see my collection? <laughs> I have the chicken soup, dear. Right, lab. One chicken! Hang on, I've changed my mind. I'll have the pea soup instead. Hold the chicken and make it pea! <laughs> Good morning, Mo. Yeah? You're educated, aren't you? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, then you can give us a sentence with judicious in it. Well, that's hard one. Um, hang on. How's that judicious can be as soft as your face? <laughs> I've got one for you. Oh, what's that, then? Give me five fruits, beginning with the letter T. Five fruits? Yeah. Different fruits? Yeah. What, so it can't be, like, four tomatoes and one tangerine? No. Uh, <laughs> tomato. Yeah. Tangerine. Yeah. I can't think of any more. <laughs> You've got chili pears, right? <laughs> chili pickles. <laughs> and a chili cream, go with them. Oh. Ah. In the 18th century, the majestic British Isles stood proudly with windswept waters swirling round its shores. The towering cliffs that lined the Cornish coast were not only a welcoming sight for foreign sailing ships, they also became a haven for gangs of smugglers. This tale tells of perhaps the most infamous tea smuggler of all, <laughs> Big Tom Tetley. <laughs> There'll be a typhoon brewing out there. <laughs> what were your name? Bernie. You got a nice in, Bernie. <laughs> How about a dark rum to warm the heart of me cockles? <laughs> well, well! You don't take me! Well, dangle me tea bags. <laughs> if it isn't old Polly, I thought you were working up the blue powder. Oh, I had to leave there. Getting a bit rough, was it? Customers frightening you a bit. No! Oh, uh. <laughs> you know, the landlord, he don't like pets in a bar. He's no pet, Polly. This is my little friend, PG. Now, let me give you a little tip. <laughs> don't try and make the monkey out of him. He's going to get nasty. Uh, yeah. <sighs> what are you two doing in here? Oh, it's freezing cold out there. I nearly froze my doodahs off. <laughs> what? My doodahs. Where do you get these? Got them off a sailor. You telltale tits. You leave her telltales out of this. <laughs> You're supposed to be keeping a lookout for the customs and excise man. Well, we saw the customs officers walking along the top of the cliff. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, the excise are doing good. <laughs> you Tom Tetley, are you still smuggling tea? I might be. And this be your gang? Aye, this is Tessie Twain Inns and Kitty Lipton. <laughs> this is old Polly. My husband used to call me Pretty Polly. <laughs> Oh, and the teeth are missing and her hair's a mess. There's no need to whisper. She's a bit deaf as well. Oh. <laughs> Polly, who be that dandy gentleman over yonder? Oh, they say that he be a rich merchant. Ah, PG, methinks our luck might be in. Walk this way. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Squire, they call me Big Tom Tetley. What be your name? 
Earl Grayson. Look at the muck in here. <laughs> Pretty fancy name, sir. My friends just called me Rosie Lee. Oh. <laughs> well, let's be my little friend, PG. Oh, would, he, would he like to buy little PG a drink, kind sir? Gee, keep him okay. <laughs> Stop your bagging! <laughs> Sorry about him, sir. He's got the brains of a baboon. Uh, now I hear you be a trading gentleman. Yes, I am indeed. And what about you, sir? Well, I've done a bit of trading on the high seas, and I can tell you it was a bit rough. Well, I don't mind a bit of rough trade. <laughs> Perhaps I can interest you in some tea. Well, I wouldn't mind a claret with a little cherry in it. Well, I'm not talking about a cup of tea. I'm talking about 40 cases of the finest Indian tea. Very interesting. Tell me more. Walk this way. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what a grey day. Shut that door. Look behind there. Did you see it? See what? That big caveman. Caveman? Ooh, I'm getting quite flushed. No, no, the cave. Did you see it? Yeah, we we got the 40 cases of tea hidden in that cave, haven't we, Tom? Ah, and they can all be yours at the right price. Oh, well, I'll buy it. Take me to the cave. Hang what on, PG, hang on. Let me see the colour of your doubloons. Will this do? That'll do nicely. Take him to the cave. Walk this way. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kitty, Tessie, methinks we can celebrate. Polly, put the kettle on. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Half a gentleman. She stole it. <gasps> tea leaf. Teapot. Chamber pot. Stop your fingers. <laughs> get outside and keep a lookout. Flunder me tea bags. It's too late if it ain't Captain Melrose. <laughs> we meet again. I've just seen an old lugger in the bay. Why don't you bring him in for a drink? <laughs> I'm talking about a ship. Your ship, Tetley. I trust, sir, you're not smuggling. Smuggling? No, Captain, I ain't been smuggling at all. Let me think now since, sir. Uh... Tom! He's gonna buy all 40 cases and here's his money. Five minutes ago. <laughs> Caught red-handed, sir. And a nice, cosy little tea party this is. <laughs> Tom Tetley, PG. Kitty Lipton, Tessie Twining. <laughs> Said old Grayson. Well, it's a gallows for you, lot. Oh. You'll all be hung up by the gizzard. Oh. Ooh, I can't wait. <laughs> a ticket for bound for Newgate Prison, then? Oh, no. The execution will take place here. No, it won't. Why not? Tea break, right, studio. Back in 15 minutes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and now, here's Brucey. I'm a singer, <laughs> got that hips and Andra sound. I'm a swinger, I'm the coolest cat in town. I could stride about this stage without even puffing. I wear a suit with lots of bits of this glittery stuffing. I got class, I'm out there on my own. I could pass for the friend of Al Capone, but what I want to have, I'm never going to have, cos I could never learn the trick, I just can't make my fingers go click. <laughs> Got the voice, I don't need to use an echo, I'm real choice. Well, as Joyce's body Greco, I could do me, do me, do the way Frankie does it. Or make like Sammy Davis Jr. and really fires it. <laughs> I got style, I got personality. I could spy when I'm straining for Topsy, but I am so quiet without what life is all. Could take me to the top I just can't make my fingers go pop <laughs> I could crew I could really pull the chicks But they leave too soon Cause I just can't do those clicks Some singers can make their fingers sound Like a shotgun When they ask me why I don't I say I just don't got none Paid my dues, work the northern nightclub scene. I don't booze, not as much as good old me. But simply not a bit, seems to help one little bit. Cause no matter how hard I think, I just can't make my fingers. It's a malady that lingers, just can't make my fingers go click. 
What was that there? I heard it crack down. I could do it. <laughs> Got me to it. Yes, I can make my fingers like all them other singers. I can make my fingers go. <laughs> will, will, will. Oh, well, back to gay shows. <laughs> oh, I love. Oh.